Okay guys, in this video I'm going to talk about pure consciousness, formless being, and then this reality construct, and then the architecture of your individuality, okay, which is your DNA, your body, but then also specifically we're going to talk about psyche, the patterns that your individual energetic memory has and how that manifests your reality in this larger reality construct. And then what I refer to as emptiness is basically a dimension where all of these forms, even your DNA chakra systems, all of, all of these energetics, and the space around you with its stuff uh, is a relative construct, like a virtual reality maybe, something like this. Well, let's just call it a reality co construct because it's organic to source, it's organic to this universe, but obviously it's a construct. So how is that obvious? In my zero point teachings, first of all, you go and find the dot that is the very center of your being and then you kind of allow your awareness to sink into the dot and you then go through type of a wormhole where you exit on the other side, where you have no body or form, okay? So this is how you can experience yourself. My guided videos and methods and meditations uh, you can find on YouTube and I will also add the meditation telegram channel where I have this guided meditation. How is this beneficial to your human beingness or to, let's say, healing or integration of your psyche. So this is what we're going to talk about. So, all right, let me, <laughs> big, big, big stuff, or not so big, I'm trying to keep it simple, but I'm aware that if you have no discourse, like if you do not know exactly what I'm talking about, then I'm just going to give you some references, all right? So we can set up the lingo, we can set up the discourse, and then we can go into details. So first of all, psyche, individuality, patterns or karma or energetic memory of our individuality. Mm, I am aware that these are architectural systems, and then they might be... Um, a little bit, like you can understand them in intuitively, but as a system, you need to actually get to know the system before you know it's functioning. So, what are we doing here in this human experience? Many, many, many big things I'm introducing into this video, so... I just want to really, really keep it real with you, and I'm trying to see what is the best overall perspective. So first of all, we are evolving. How? We are what is called source, better than the word God, because it's like infinite omnipotence that is a being that creates itself into organizations that we call organisms, and then sub-beings, okay, which are then on different levels, many different beings and many different uh, multiverses actually so the human game of life is very specific because you get to experience yourself also as an individual that is a part of a larger organism but does not have to perceive itself uh, to be commanded by that larger organism okay so imagine cells in your body are part of this like huge universe that is your body it's actually huge they can work in coherence with your organism and they're programmed to do so so this is a synergy inside of your body cellular tissues everything now imagine if every cell had was a unit with its own free will now your cells will be going around, uh, picking different interests, and some of them will be 
like wanting to run the country or society or the planet or the universe that is surviving this way and others would do would want to do it in that way so human beings have free will mm -hmm. now before we ever even get to use that free will um, in a sort of adult way or mature way we experiment a lot with that free will the point of this game of life and this planet is hey you know do whatever you like but then you need to find also a golden thread a thin line where you get to do whatever you like and you can actually manifest whatever you like but you need to do it in a way that does not contradict the free will of all the other cells so everybody all these millions of people were endowed with this free will and even godlike okay so we're humans we do physical reality when i say godlike i am saying that we can like imagine realities on a quantum level okay but you will not tap into your godlike freedom why are you still running in your memory, in your software of your individuality, which is also called karma? Why are you running presumptions uh, of reality that are not real mature perceptions? So, <laughs> let me give you an example. What do we do in the human game of life? We rebel a lot against other people. We have governments that govern us, so we're not acting as we are like sovereign free will cells or individuals. But then when we rebel against some other peoples or some things, this is maturation phase. This is maturation phase. So all of our drama <laughs> is sort of called karma because in this energetic memory, we're not finding resolutions, so we are then projecting looping scenarios until we find a perspective where we can say, oh, you know what? If you do as you like and I do as I like, we can still find an agreement. Now, this can be very complex on a level of society and like even if you have one-on-one -on -one relationship and you have a partner or children you know how this works it's a lot of challenges all the time and then on the level of a country tribe global society it's crazy you can't command other people what to do if you force them to do something that you want you get karma now you have to have to have really clear understanding of what you want and then to be patient enough with everyone to let them have what they want but then also we want to have relationships and find win-win uh, arrangements so there's a lot of politics diplomacy strategy empathy compassion and we have to really really develop all of our skills to be able to do that okay so how does that connect into like the zero point or the formless in Buddhism, <laughs> this emptiness where you are still consciousness but there is no body, there is no individuality, there is no karma, there is no problems, there is no other people, there is no time, the movie the, the, the where we experience time or the multiplayer arena of this simulation where we experience time and individuality. None of this really exists because it is the appearance of form that creates this experience this very complex intricate your dna is the script that we are interacting with the cosmic clockwork the movement of the planets or the how we are also influenced by the lar larger universal logos or the planetary planetary clockwork that you also understand as your astrology for example, okay, so it's 
a lot of factors in the mix in our reality. When you solve your troubleshooting with relationships with other people, you get to be free from those roles. Automatically, these roles will be manifested for you, which means a sort of destiny or determinism. And you don't know that. You were born, you don't remember, and then things happen and it's just life happening to you randomly. No, it's actually very designed, but you might not yet be aware of the patterns that you incarnated with. So now you're exploring life and things are happening. And now you can learn relationships and acceptance and also you learn to govern yourself in a way that you are a free cell, a free unit individu individuality, yes, human, one human person being. And you can be without push and pull, not breaking the fundamental law of this universe, which is, hey, everyone is God, so be your own God, but you can't uh, insert your will over other people's. Which then, which is really simple on the baseline level, but then when we have relationship, it's like very, very, very freaking nuanced. It becomes like, even if you, in your psyche, create an idea, a projection, that you are better than someone, is that a judgment? If you feel that you are lesser than someone, is that still a judgment? Now, there is objective discernment where you can see, mm, okay, my skill levels are not as developed in this arena as yours. And this goes without judgment. It goes through uh, acceptance and compassion. But then we can often make ideas that, let me joke about it. It's going to be easier to explain. Why is, why is people such, an, such idiots? Like idiots, I, can't, I don't understand these people, such idiots. Because we identify with our paradigm, we identify with our logic or system of logic really easily, and then other people have different systems of culture, logic, or even morals, and we find that we can't understand that. Which is okay if it's live and let live. But if we start to judge, then we are going to actually subscribe ourselves into energetic dissonance or uh, repulsion or the other word for that would be resistance for allowing them to be. Now, we don't need to even physically go against that. We, know, we don't even need to go verbally in their face and be like, stop what you're doing, your culture ain't right. This is the proper culture, my tribe, my culture, my religion. Which we often do, <laughs> we go and create wars. <laughs> but we can just be not accepting that. And in our psyche, in our soul, this will form a lesson. So something is then a burden on your conscience. Okay, you, you will feel like when you die and you review your, your life, then you're like, oh, okay. I was like not accepting these people as equal as myself, as free beings, but I was creating resistance, judging them, not accepting them. So all of these then become layers and layers and layers of experience that needs to be integrated. So when we say healing the psyche or healing the soul, we're integrating these binary oppositions that we may assume about the world that we live in. And we try to go to that level of unconditional love, which is simply put, live and let live, sound simple, yet try to be non-judgmental, non-reactive, when you don't understand other people's viewpoints and other people's systems of logic or culture or, or moral standpoints. So it's a lot of debating, it's a lot of argumentation on this planet, and it's a lot of even violence and war when we insist to persist that our opinion, our point of view 
is in kind of like totalitarian way uh, better or more fit to rule other people's lives. Okay, so we need to give everybody free will to and freedom to evolve according to their own perception. Whether we agree with that or not. And now, even if you're hearing this is probably sparking a lot of uh, troubleshooting, a lot of, but what if somebody wants to kill and na 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 na. So, God don't judge, yes? But the conscience of every individual being is imprinted with whenever they force someone to do something against their will. So whether we should judge that, if somebody kills me, like Jesus knew, I shouldn't. But it's very hard to see things with our logics and system of logic from the place where somebody is connected to Christic consciousness. In the Christic consciousness, also this is a game and a school of learning, so you can say, oh, you know, you killed me, I'm indestructible consciousness, so I forgive you from what you are seeing, this will be imprinted in your consciousness, but um, I don't have to take it personally, because the consciousness is transpersonal. <laughs> Might that be a lot already? I don't know. So let me have a sip of coffee, and then we can go into energetics of all of this, and maybe some usable... Um, actually advice. So when I teach experiencing yourself as formless consciousness, you go to this point, you dive into that point, and you emerge on the other side where you can locate yourself on a transcendent level from whatever you are identified with in this reality construct. So first of all, um, that's something to remember. Okay. So when I came also in this human life, most of us, we don't remember that. Like 99% of people, they don't know that. We're just immersed into our nervous systems, our thoughts and our patterns, and we're doing what we do. Um, so I was actually pretty stoked too have the reality dissolve the construct of reality which I now address as a construct of reality which was for me this is it on a quantum level it depixelated into a void and Buddhist people call this sunyata the emptiness and apparently if you were on a Buddhist path in this life, on a previous life, all you are trying to do is clear karma to get to emptiness. Because when you get to emptiness, it is also the liberation, you finish the university. So it's called liberation. Now, <laughs> not everybody in every lifetime is trying to finish the university because as you know, with your chakra system, there are like seven gra uh, grades. Or uh, you go to school, maybe this university or earth, maybe even elementary school. But you have first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade. And then grades above are like you're already going to high school. So these are your chakras. <laughs> and on each chakra, uh, life works a little bit differently. So if you kept to a lower chakra, because you're evolving from lower chakra to upper chakra, then, hey, it's all about survival. It's instinctual, animalistic, and you have to develop the higher chakra system to be able to find compassion, diplomacy, uh, create these win-win type of relationships. For all of that, it's necessary to at least Mm, or probably it's necessary to do many lifetimes or maybe you can do it in a lifetime because you have already been to a similar system or a similar planetary 
reality construct where you can uh, develop faster in this incarnation, in this specific unique realm that we're now talking about, Earth. Okay. Yes, there are many planets, <laughs> many systems. And some are similar to us. So if you have been a humanoid on a different planet already evolved, you will get... This will be like going to another country, another continent, weird culture, like going from west to east. On this planet, you see very different systems like Japan, crazy, India, crazy, New York City, crazy. So everywhere is a unique fractal of crazy, yeah? <laughs> and of course, specific tribes that still live in specific uh, remote areas like jungles or islands and they have all their own indigenous cultures like super interesting super interesting so if you have been a humanoid on a different planet then probably 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 you will just feel like i don't know taking somebody from indigenous tribe from a jungle to a city for the first time and how people eat how people dress how people interact it's not the same like in the jungle but then they're people, so you learn their ways and you get used to it. <laughs> maybe you learn to speak the language and maybe then mm, you assimilate. Or maybe this whole lifetime you remain a sort of your own subculture in, in that larger entity, in that larger civilization. So you fit in. <laughs> it's easier to fit in like places like New York City, everybody came there from somewhere, so it's very multicultural, you see. If a person from the city went to a jungle, they would find ways of those people quite odd. But then you'll get used to it. <laughs> and it will be an interesting culture to explore. <laughs> So, how does the emptiness then help us actually work this reality? Work our own karmic patterns. Work our own energetic architecture. Work our own individual looming. <laughs> this is actually where this becomes interesting because emptiness in itself is empty of phenomena so from there you can go and explore different stuffs uh, but they don't relate to this reality and this reality specifically you came into this reality to do this reality <laughs> if that makes sense so what you're interested in is like relationships monies maybe government, maybe whatever is your uh, specific venue of interest, vocation, profession, etc. Uh, mostly, you're interested to understand your patterning and whatever is karmic or you're looping duality patterns where you don't recognize other people in like diversity within larger unity and you give and allow freedom all of these are recorded patterns they are then habits that loop and dramas that loop now you can have patterns also in your energetic memory where you organize yourself to a ritual where you get up every day you have your coffee you go to the gym you go to work you play with your kids and then in the evening you watch Netflix or whatever, this is not a problem. <laughs> these patterns are not a problem for you. You can also optimize and redesign these patterns on a subconscious level. They're just your habits. And on an energetic level, you can rehabituate yourself by thinking, envisioning, visualizing, meditating on the things that you prefer doing so you create different feedback loops with your reality. The feedback loops that trigger us 
they create drama and they create frustration and really um, also not allow us to be in our creator consciousness because they keep us in these looping situations of duality, binary oppositions, politicking without resolving things. These things are the ones that you want to actually work on. So, blah, 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 I've said it all, and here comes the grand suggestion. If this reality is a construct, holographic, architectural, energetic construct, and it's also relative, uh, on an absolute level, your source or pure consciousness, everything is relative. But within this construct, there are also layers of relativity. Okay, so let's say you think about something, you change your mind, poof, these thoughts go away, and now you set your choice to go into this direction. So thoughts are super ephemeral. They're really relative. They're really, do you feed them or do you let them go? Subconscious patterns, they're kind of installed. Karma, kind of there. It's a little bit more complex than just a thought that comes to your head. I imagine an apple and no, then I imagine a banana. Okay, that was easy. Pattern, more complex looming. Still, ephemeral. So you can do your karma. You can work your karma by transmuting your karma. Okay. And then you can get to transcendence and you can get to creator consciousness and then you can be really, really liberating in this reality to play however the F you want. And you will have this also God-like attributes, which will just be that you, your conscious moved into this uh, expansion, into this arena where you know how to work the universe to create things together with your individuality. So this gives you then God-like properties. They're not personal, they're transpersonal, you're just tapping into them and you can use it. So way more, way more than potentiality for play and creativity. Now, your patterning that is karmic creates a lot of psychological turmoil, creates a lot of drama in relationships and keeps us in these loops when we feel unsatisfied and frustrated because we don't experience unconditional love and where we do not give unconditional love, we are then judged and also like bullied into something by somebody else because we projected that um, judgment before. And even if I hate, if I like hate you, and somebody's gonna hate me, and if I criticize you, if you're learning karmic lessons. You may even think of criticizing me, but not go to say it. But then somebody comes and say it right in your face. <laughs> so you can see that maybe even unintentionally or unconsciously, you were projecting resistance and criticism and judgment. Somebody comes to say it right into your face, then you get triggered. And this trigger is actually allowing this criticism that you stored to dissolve so karma is uncomfortable <laughs> i mean emotionally it's kind of like not a pleasant experience so here we are playing in the human game of life of course we want to get to <laughs> we want to get to this graduation and then we can stay here and play co-create with others share, educate, play, have fun. But on this level, there's you, 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 you cross over into the frequency in this same plane, same multiplayer arena, where you're not affected by whatever you graduated from. It does not affect you. Like nobody robs you, nobody comes to uh, bully you, criticize you, unless you succumb into these thought forms again. Once you get out of these thought forms, you're free to play. And people who judge or want to like 
fight and prove they're right and the other person is wrong. They're fighting, but they don't really interact with you anymore. Okay, so all of this brings me to then the topic of today, which is alchemy. I have to do this long ass introduction or fat ass introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do this fat ass introduction and um, and yeah um, alchemy what is alchemy? so understanding then relativity of your ephemeral mental body thought level of thoughts and ideas and mindsets understanding also the feelings the emotional body you start to see then that the patterns also in your psyche are ephemeral. In other words, they are there, but they can transform. And they're also a software that creates your destiny, your life experience, and creates all the situations. And then eh, these situations are actually prompting you to look inside of your software and say, Oh my God, I've installed a hate app <laughs> or something a lot of people hating me I don't feel loved and it sucks but then I was hating or something yes so you want to create not hate yes because it feels better right your emotions are also telling you oh my god what is this experience like why are we having this conversation why are we having these fights come on guys it's 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 eh uh, right mm. unknowingly while we are maturing people are persisting that impressions of reality and what other people tell me is somehow they're idiots right this is like very childish like we are narcissists because still we perceive from a childish point of view so it's like it's about you. It's about what you did to me. It's about you hating me. It's never about me. <laughs> Finding out that life is a mirror. It's a karmic mirror. <laughs> so I'm, I must be doing that on a level. So Jesus the Christ, he said, uh, like, in, check yourself first. Before you throw the stone, right? It was like, before you throw the stone, check yourself. Have you been on any level like acting in the way that the person that irritates you, that you're judging, that you're throwing the stone, that you're lynching or criticizing before you even do this? Like check yourself first because you wouldn't be seeing that person in your theater, in your movie, in your reality and reacting to them if on some level unconsciously you weren't a little like if you weren't this little demon also <laughs> so it's kind of hard to notice because when people are going to be like criticizing someone or stoning lynching someone it's not the actual time and direct mirror, okay, it may be like a time latency. So we're not seeing, we're not doing that at the moment. So we're like, oh, they're doing that. And we judge them because we cannot see ourselves that we also did that previously. So this is a funny thing. When you start to notice the subconscious is like this memory. And everything is stored. So it's a burden on your conscience. <laughs> and then you project judgment. We, I'm not going to say you, maybe you're an angel. <laughs> Me, you, we project judgment. Humans, okay? This is what we do. So then we realize, okay, wait, wait, wait. This bothers me, and that bothers me, and that triggers me, and that's actually my karma. Now we start to be responsible. And then, you know what? 
it's transformable because all the layers like even your DNA is transformable if you get to that level of creatorship where you can direct your awareness into your different layers of this reality quantum you can transform it all even on a quantum level it has some rules and this would be like manifestation like deeper another video or maybe even like a few videos to really go into cohesiveness of all the architectures and the layers now let's just talk about the layer of the psyche mental body emotional body everything is recorded in these two layers and they are transformable on an energetic level you can even surrender your karma and here's an example dear god we pray or christ okay christ I mean, we, we may call christ jesus or bunny christ whoever was in the christ is representative yes of that consciousness so we say dear christ purify me of all the thoughts and emotions that you know are complications in the school of life or we call them sins sinful thoughts but they're really complicated because they assume duality and they assume projection of the other in without acceptance and then they create logics that further amplify our own psychological drama and then we're just too busy and we're immersed in it so it all seems kind of bona fide it seems like oh yeah yeah this is really the story where they did this to me and i hate you forever and you broke my heart but it's not really the essence of what you came here to do it's not your soul soul's journey it's a complication so sin is we're all sinners right we all get into this uh, binary oppositions and then we tell our own logic with but we cannot understand other people's point of view we don't walk in their shoes we cannot understand their system of logic and we should be actually either just letting them do their thing and not be bothered or try to understand their system their perspective their point of view through empathy through also <laughs> connecting we're interconnected Okay, so this is maturity. And so when we would say, okay, Christ, purge this, purify this, we're giving up from our software, from our memory, these things. And if you know that you are also the Christ, or uh, at least like pure consciousness or something like this, then you see that all of this is an architecture or energetics or software within a reality construct so whatever layer you are confirming that ah uh, kill all racial minorities or other tribes or genocide or like i am better than you or i or you did this to blah, 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 blah. you can loop this forever and ever and ever or transmute because wherever energy is stored and these architectures of your karma and energetic memory software are stored, there is a higher level on which all of this is relative. Where you experience physical reality, there is a higher level on which that is relative. If you move to that higher level, from that higher level, you can transmute physical appearances of things. Or that higher level in congruence, in coherence with your prayer, request, whatever, invocation, prompt, can then change this reality. This is how we learn manifestation and things like this. And so you can then shift your pattern. This is my presentation for today. <laughs> okay, so call to action if you want to check out Zero Point uh, Guided experiencing and then also transmuting patterns and uh, stuffs i am um, having telegram group also if you want to do one-on-one -on -one shifting where i can guide you through all of these architectures so they can be uh shifted for you energetics or whatever is bugging you it can be deleted on an energetic level if you allow the higher architecture of reality to do that for you and then you have to sit and meditate. So if you're not 
doing this on your own. I can guide you to do that in a very comfortable way. Uh, so check out my links that I will add, add beneath this video. That's it for today. I hope you had a wonderful time. Ciao.